And everybody thought, you know, hey, John is just, uh, he's a great Christian guy. He's got a walk that you could emulate. But at home, I was a miserable porn addict. John Snyder's battle with porn addiction started as a young boy when a friend brought a magazine to school. I knew that I was drawn to it. And when I kind of caught my first glimpse, I thought, wow. This is something else. I, I want to see more. It put me on a path, and uh, I realized that this had power over me. He grew up in a Christian home, but that wasn't enough to stop his secret fascination with pornography. I didn't have the relationship with God to kind of give me that moral compass that would steer me in the right direction. And so I didn't know how to switch off that, that urge. I didn't know how to switch off that desire. There was this bad thing that I wasn't supposed to look at, but at the same part, there was this part of me that was saying, I really like this, and so I must be bad. And so it, it puts this wedge of shame between uh, me and God as it related to my own sexuality. As John entered high school, guilt and shame took a heavy toll. I was experiencing, um, you know, suicidal tendencies and things like that. Alcohol, pornography, those became my, my crutches. That's how I dealt with the emotional pain that I was feeling at that time in my life. I really didn't like the person that I was because the person that everybody else liked wasn't the person that I saw when I looked in the mirror. And when I'd look in the mirror, I would see my faults. I would pick myself apart. His mother gave him a Bible, and eventually he began reading it. Suddenly the Word of God became alive to me and it started to minister to the wounds and it started to minister to the questions that I had as a, as a teen. That was the start of my relationship with God and uh, that, that started to change things in a very powerful way. He says he was able to avoid looking at pornography for months at a time, but in his 20s when internet pornography became more accessible, he fell even deeper into addiction. There was even greater perversion that, uh, that was opening up in my heart and, uh, and kind of corrupting my mind and, you know, jading me to, to things that, you know, nobody should ever look at. I was addicted. Um, there was hardly a day going by. It was starting to affect uh, my work and, and other areas of my life. Obviously, it was, it was a, a downward spiral of self-esteem. It's this vicious cycle that, that a lot of addicts get into. They feel horrible about themselves, and so they medicate with their addiction, but then the addiction makes them feel worse about themselves, and so the cycle just perpetuates itself. And so I was absolutely stuck right, right there. I knew I was addicted. I knew that everything I had tried uh, wasn't working. I think I had pretty much gotten to a point of despair at that point where I felt like, can I ever be free? Will I ever be free? What is it going to take for me to be free from this? He joined accountability groups and became active in his church. He even confessed to his girlfriend, Lisa. But he says he was still trapped. I just started to say, I have to get free from this. And I was tired of settling for sin management. I wanted freedom from sin. And so I was trying everything that I knew how to do at that point to forsake this sin, but it's a spiritual problem first and foremost. You know, the devil's been doing this for a long time and tempting people for a long time, and he knows how to push our buttons and exploit the, the weaknesses in our hearts. Um, so I had heart wounds, I had heart needs, and I had a perspective of God and a perspective of myself that needed to all be flipped on its ear before I would ever start to walk in real freedom. John married Lisa, but his struggle with pornography continued into their marriage. He says it was finally accepting God's love and grace that set him on the path to freedom. I committed myself to seeking the face of the Lord uh, and to have him minister the truths that I needed in my heart in order to, to see me set free. God was restoring the person almost in a sense before he was even dealing with the sin. He was giving me what I needed in order to, to be able to, to walk away from it as a whole person again. After years of addiction, John finally saw permanent changes. There's a process of healing the heart that absolutely has to take place because if that heart isn't healed, nothing else is gonna work. And so God taught me, you know what? When you look in the mirror, see yourself as I see you because I created you with a purpose. I created you perfect. I'm so happy with you. I'm so well pleased of you. I'm so proud of you. 
John is an author and public speaker who now helps other men find freedom from pornography addiction as he did through the love and grace of God. I'm a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. And so I get to enjoy all the benefits of being a new creation. I get to enjoy the benefits of, of fellowship with Him. There is freedom, real freedom, where you can enjoy your life, not white knuckling your sin, you know, for the rest of your life and just, you know, working on sin management. I don't believe in sin management. I believe that you can actually walk in freedom from this sin.